Namaste and welcome to Transform to Transcend Holistic 360. This is a part of our show that we particularly enjoy because it gives us an opportunity to bring someone from our community here in Dubai into our studio. We get to know them, they tell us a little bit about themselves, what they do, and they air a health concern of theirs, which Lalita Vishwanath of Pratimoksha addresses for them. Today we have someone who has shown that we all have the power of choice to meet adversity, whatever it might be, with positivity. She is on a mission to document this year of the pandemic, the year 2020, through, as she says on her website, through a million stories, a million memories, a million lessons. She is Bettina Tauro, the founder of humansof2020.com, a website with a very simple concept. She would like you, she would like me and anyone out there in the world to share their story, their very personal experience of the pandemic. She is also the co-founder and the co-host of the NRI Woman podcast. Let's welcome Bettina Tauro. Welcome Bettina. Namaste. Namaste Maria. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for having me Lalita. <laughs> it's our pleasure. As always, we have Lalita Vishwanath of Pratimoksha with us. Namaste, Namaste. Lalita. Let's hear from Bettina how the concept of humansof2020.com came about. Bettina, over to you. Please tell us. Thank you. So, um, as you mentioned, 2020 has just been an unusual year for everybody. And for me, I lost my mum in the year 2020 to COVID. And as was the norm in that time, uh, we had the entire service online. And none of us could travel back to India to be there to support my family. But a strange thing happened, because the service was online, we had much more of our family and friends than would have normally been there had it been a traditional service. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the service, uh, we were just chatting with each other and my friends and family from across the world were sharing stories about my mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, something different happened because when the service was finished, mm -hmm. instead of feeling grief, uh, my heart was actually filled with joy. And I realized in that moment, it was the beginning of my healing because I had listened to some wonderful stories mm. about my mother, the legacy that she has left behind, the kind of life she has lived. Mm. And uh, somewhere that stayed with me over the grief of letting go of her physical presence. Mm. So that was one part of it. And uh, the second was that the whole year, I kept listening to people say that, you know, 2020, 20, I mean, 2020 doesn't count. It should be written off. Mm. Even before my mom passed, I thought that doesn't seem right. Mm. But especially after losing my mom, I said, oh my God, this cannot be. Mm. You know, the way the government's govern has changed, the way we do business has changed, mm. the way we live has changed. We don't hug each other anymore. If somebody mm. coughs, we don't say bless you anymore. Mm. We look at them suspiciously. Yes. So how can it be that a year as such cannot count? Mm. And I thought if stories was the beginning of healing for me, mm. perhaps it can be healing for other people too. And I wanted to create a place for people to come and share their stories, whether they're writers or they're not right. writers. I'm not a writer. Mm. I've never considered myself somebody who's written anything. Mm. And uh, But once I overcame that fear and put it out there, it was, it was healing. Mm. And today I can see what it does for other people. So this is my purpose. Mm. I've discovered I love encouraging other people to share their stories. I love telling other people's stories and connecting humans through stories. So that's how Humans of 2020 came about. about. That's, it's, it's actually such a simple concept and um, I particularly like the section on your website where you uh, break down all the thoughts that a person could possibly have for not sharing their story. That you know, you don't have a story that is interesting enough or you are not interesting or that you are a private person, you don't want to be the center of attention. You've broken each one down and told you why each person, whatever their story might be, whatever their experience might be, it actually counts and it will probably find some resonance with someone out there in on in the world so uh, there are many incredible stories and uh, would you like to share one or two of them which particularly resonates with you today as we sit here and yeah. talk i'm just uh, i mean all of the stories that have been shared are you know they resonate with me in one way or another mm. and i take away something from each story but I'm going to highlight one is from what you said, mm. uh, where people think that they don't have a story to mm. share. So I'm going to share the story of uh, uh, a girl who's written, it says, I'm not enough. Mm. Uh, oh, sorry, I am enough. That is no. the title of her story. 
but uh, she's had an incredibly hard year. In 2019, she lost her job because the company that she was working for went bankrupt. Mm. In 2020, her year began with divorce uh, after 13 years of marriage. Mm. In 2019, there was a robbery in her family where she lost all her jewelry, every single piece. Mm. So 2020 was the year that she was looking forward to new beginnings, uh, you know, a new life, a new job, everything. Mm. Instead, she was moving back into her mother's house uh, mm. with nothing, mm. feeling like a failure. Mm. Uh, and through all of that, she was reluctant to share her story because she kept thinking, you know, there are so many other people who've had it so much harder. Yes. And why should I be complaining? I have a roof over my head. I have food to eat. I have family. I have friends. Yes. I have my health. She's a breast cancer survivor who's in remission. So, uh, so my story is, I mean, there's nothing count. much to my mm. story. It doesn't mm. count. And when she shared her story, the amount of feedback and love and appreciation mm. she got, she was completely taken aback because mm. she did not expect it yes. at all. Mm. Uh, that was the f that was one part of it. The other part of it was that when she shared her story, she felt like she owned her life, mm. and that has given her the confidence to do whatever she has to do. And this is it. When we share our story, what we tell and how we tell our stories is to some extent how our life is going to pan out, mm. and what we because we become the stories we tell. Yes. And uh, so this is a wonderful opportunity when we are you know confused when we don't have direction mm. especially in a year like 2020 when there's mm. so much of uncertainty mm. by telling a story that has happened to us and where we want to be we can actually form the path of where yes. we hope to be yes so yeah so that's that's one of the stories I'm sure you you would agree with that because you teach us about affirmations and visualization Absolutely. techniques and how to create the path that you really want in life rather than just living Absolutely. would you like to add anything about one of the things is what all of us, uh, I mean, each one of us, we've had our own lessons from this whole year. And one thing is, it's not the end of the road. You know, there's always light uh, to, uh, you know, guide us. Absolutely, absolutely. And so where I see, you know, uh, all the experiences will teach us some lesson or the other. It is only to strengthen our inner will. That's it. If you're able to take it that way, life is much easier. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm just going to add to uh, to what you said. Uh, there, you know, that inner world. So there is another story on the platform. It's mm. uh, I think it's called Big C for Cancer. Yes. Uh, the author of that story lost her grandmother mm. uh, to cancer, and uh, she was somebody. The grandmother was somebody who held the family together. So mm. uh, she was uh, the foundation. So her loss was something that really shook the mm. family. Mm. And uh, after she shared her story about her grandmother, uh, the author reached out to me separately and sent me a message saying that for the first time in six months after her grandmother had passed away, she had been able to sleep through the whole night. So sharing that story was catharsis for her. Yes. Uh, it was a kind of healing. Uh, it meant she also overcame her own fears about wanting to, uh, about judgment, about what other people are going to think about her story, mm. especially because she's not a writer. Mm. But here is the really interesting part about uh, what we were talking about earlier, that the stories we tell kind of define who we become. Mm. Because in sharing that story, it has given her the courage to do something that she's always wanted to do, which is to write a book about her grandmother. Mm. And now that she's uh, published sort of the first mini chapter about mm. her grandmother, mm. she's encouraged to do that. And this is what she's going to do, mm. share another story. So yeah, so that's another story from yeah. uh, the website. Mm. That's, it's so inspiring mm. because just a small kernel of an idea and then from that it's just a whole book has now yeah. come out of yeah. that. Yeah. Because what we may think is trivial for us. Yes. Maybe the, you know, turning Spark. point. Yeah, mm. absolutely for somebody else. Mm. And why not be the change for someone yes, else? Yes, yes. And actually, uh, Lalita, you also advocate journaling, you know, in our classes uh, because that gives you a lot of catharsis and opportunity to kind of really work through the feelings and thoughts and those repet repetitive patterns, yes. uh, th thoughts that you keep having all That's the time. Yeah. So this is like a platform that Bettina has opened out for people to actually kind of share their story and it leads to catharsis for them and for others who then kind of have that confidence to say, yes, I also matter. Yes, absolutely. Mm. And I think because 2020, if anything, has been a year of change mm. yes. and disruption like mm. nothing else in mm. our lives. So it's, so it's a wonderful opportunity for us to rebuild yeah. our lives in a way that 
uh, that we want yes. as opposed to living mechanically like we have in the past yes yes and and probably change many things that we we have been doing in a certain way which has probably not impacted the earth yes in a in a in a very bad way and and i mean like you know it you can reset you can yes. press the reset button for so many yeah. things mm -hmm. so when we approached you for this talk show you had a very interesting health concern that you wanted to to uh, talk to lalita about so would you like to ask lalita 